Well, good afternoon, YouTube, and whoever else is watching this. Um, coming at you with some updates for the truck. Uh, basically, uh, the last video, what we did is we uh, did a, some suspension work for the truck and um, uh, went ahead and added in a pan hard bar. Basically, all we were doing in that video was just kind of getting things welded, getting things fitted roughly so that they could be taken back off at a later date, cleaned up, primed, painted, and then reinstalled, you know, prettified and making them, you know, very aesthetical, um, make them look pretty. So that's basically what I'm doing today, along with something a little else that I'm going to be adding to the truck to kind of, you know, make it more of a party barge. Anyways, I'll flip you guys around here. Um, as you'll notice, I have the bar taken out at the moment and just a bunch of plastics and stuff laid down. So I try to keep the overspray to a minimum if I can. Um, I went ahead and painted this main bar that goes across. This is actually the drag, uh, not the drag link, but this is actually the steering arm that comes across from the actual box. Uh, it was this color red for the longest time. And, uh, you know, I don't want it to be like pa Picasso Picadillo down here and have like 30,000 different colors. So I figured, you know, while I'm painting and while I'm at it, might as well. So we painted up that. Um, yes, I understand that powder coating probably would have been the way to go, but I don't really... That, that won't come off. Um, I've tried taking it off and, uh, you know, it won't come off. So I'd rather not wreck ball joints and stuff in the sake of painting things. So I'll just, you know, paint them on the truck and we'll, we'll do it the Home Depot way. Because doing a bunch of powder coating stuff is, uh, you know, I don't really have the, the pocket paper for that at the moment. Uh, another idea that I was kicking around, and you guys let me know down in the comments. Um, I was thinking about painting these like just the, the faces this same color and leaving the insides black because obviously i'll never get a grinder down in there to try to clean that up but i can clean these faces up and paint these to match this and just leave the insides black uh you know or i just might just leave them black i don't know yet let me know down in the comments you know give me uh give me some ideas there fellers uh anyways also went ahead and added a uh, a new plate up in the front and i figured it was proper you know we do the black american flag with we the people because you know that's you know, it's self-explanatory there, fellas. So, self-explanatory. Figured it fit the old girl pretty good. Um, never mind the mess in the shop again. I've been working a lot of overtime, working on a big promotion for the company that I'm working for right now. Uh, so I haven't really had a lot of time to deal with that. Here's the actual pan hard bar and the design that we came up with. As you'll notice, it's nice and pretty fied and nice and pretty blue. Um, Good news about all this is I'll have one pretty engine hook by the time I'm done with it for this old ragged out engine hoist. But it makes for a good little paint stand. Never mind this chip right here. That was from it hanging on the hook. I'll probably kind of touch that up once I get it off there and hear all the paint cures and it looks pretty. Uh, but, you know, that's that's it. And, you know, we got the, uh, the bushings that'll go in here and then there's bushings that go on the other end. And, you know, it does the thing and it keeps the axle from doing this. You know, because with leaf springs... You know, she wanders. She, uh, she wanders a bit. And I'm going to be keeping this truck leaf sprung just for the simple fact of, for one, I don't have, you know, I don't have the pocket paper to go like King Shocks and like Four Link and all that fancy, fancy new age technology. Uh, and for two, I just, I dig the old 80s look, man. Like, the way these trucks looked back in the 80s of the four-wheel drive jamborees and stuff, that is the look that I'm going for. Um, with just a smidgen of new age just kind of pinched in there, you know, just, just kind of like parsley, you know. But I'm keeping the truck leaf sprung. Now, I noticed that some people made some comments about these. We got off a lift blocks in the back, and I knew that they were going to. Now, those are not staying. Um, I will be uh, getting a custom leaf pack from uh, I think it's off-road designs that does the kit for this truck and it'll actually bring the custom pack down further closer to the axle so I can maybe run just a block like maybe by yay or maybe a block not at all <clears throat> but you know that's in the works anyways I'm gonna bring you to another section of this project of what we're doing today and that is going to be adding auxiliary batteries now, before people roast me in the comments, I understand, don't mind my beer cans. Uh, we like to party. 
I understand that lithium has become quite the thing here in the off-road world for obvious reasons. You know, a lithium battery of this size is astronomically more powerful than both of these ever will be combined. But uh, once again, you know, I don't that that put that pocket paper that those things cost. The upfront cost is 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 significant, and I just can't I can't justify that right now. So this is the route we're going with. This is by far cheaper getting started, but in the long run, it'll actually be more expensive. But who really cares about the long run? Anyways, here's the amperage that we're going to be working on. And you, you can start a drinking game by the, by the amount of times that I say anyways. Every time I say anyways, just take a shot. Anyways, here's the ratings we're dealing with. You got 925 cold cranking amps at zero degrees and 1050 at 32. It very seldomly will ever get to that point in Florida. So this number here, pretty much just ignore it. Um, sometimes it does get below 32 here, but not very often. So that's the number we'll be going off of. And then you got 180 uh, RC minutes, which basically what that means is this battery can, for 180 minutes, hold a minimum of, I think it's 11, is it either 10 and a half or 11 volts um, for 180 minutes at full, di at like a 25 or... Is it a 25 amp or a 50 amp discharge? Um, so, you know, that's that's a little over an hour. That's, you know, that's a full movie right there. So you got an hour, two hours. Now, the battery that's in the truck, uh, the system isn't very, uh, you know, extensional. I'm not really pushing a whole bunch of amperage. I'm really pushing a whole bunch of amperage. So just off of the starting battery alone, I've been able to run this thing for, you know, four, five, six hours and turn the key and she fires right up. You know, it's just a... Just a regular old 350. Now, once I get into a performance engine, that may be a little different because you're dealing with higher compression and dealing with, uh, you know, more rotating mass and things like that. And it's, you know, it's harder on the battery at that point. Now, you may or may not have seen that I've got two switches sitting here. And the reason why, like, why wouldn't you just run one disconnect, right? Why, why run two? Well, I'm going to tell you. This one right here is just a basic on-off disconnect. This is going to go in between this disconnect and the alternator or battery up front wherever i decide to tie into and that's going to isolate this which will isolate these from the battery now furthermore this switch here has a couple of different options you can run battery one battery two or you can run both so and this, I'm going to do this for a couple of reasons. Reason being number one is I don't think the alternator that I have in the front, even though it is an aftermarket one and it is putting out, um, it, it's putting out roughly about 200 amps. Uh, big step up from the, like the 90 amp that it came with in the factory. Um, but it was procured off of the jungle website. So I don't exactly know. It's, it's probably putting out more or less like 180, 190. You know, I don't trust, uh, I don't trust China's ratings, especially when they come with a certificate from China. That really makes me worry because they thought to include the certificate because they were like, ah. but anyways, I don't think that alternator is going to be able to handle charging all three batteries at the same time or four batteries because I actually do plan on adding a second starting battery over in the corner of the, uh, of the truck on the opposite side, just like the, the Detroit diesel would have had. They would have had two batteries. That's actually where I'm going to get the battery tray from. But uh, anyways, that'll allow me to not only just charge one battery at a time, or well, technically two batteries at a time, but it'll also let me select, say, if we want to set up somewhere for a while and I only want to discharge one battery uh, while, this, while the system is playing. Uh, a lot of times when we go, I go to events like RYC, I go out to a local place out Rancho, I go a lot, a lot of places and I'm, tr I'm trying to get to do more and more uh, wheeling, but I also like to hang out, man. You know, I like to kick back, have a couple of cold snacks, and, you know, just kind of hang with the boys. Most of the time we're doing that, I've got both of my doors open, and, you know, I've got the stereo cranked up. I want to be able to park somewhere, isolate my starting battery, and not have to worry about whether or not my truck's going to start in, you know, the next few hours, or however long it may be. Not to mention if I have a battery, like, say, the starting battery conks out. Well, I've got two more in the trunk. I'm trying to think of every which way that, uh, you know, I can kind of bulletproof this system and do it uh, somewhat on the cheap, you know, on the affordable side to where, you know, 
someone like you is watching and want to undertake adding auxiliary batteries to your rig or to anything for that matter, um, you, know, you can feel confident with doing so because it's really not that hard. Now what I would recommend is you guys get out, go out and get actual oxygen free copper. Do not go out and get these, this copper clad stuff just because it's $32 on Instagram for, or on Instagram. Man, I really can't talk today. Just because it's, you know, $32 on that jungle website and it's, oh, it's cheap. Well, it's a, there's a reason. This, this is actually, it, it, it'd be okay for a ground. I, I would use this for a ground, for sure. Because that's, you know, it's fine. It's not carrying a lot of amperage. Um, but definitely for the wires running from your alternator to your battery, you know, one aught. You don't always have to run one aught, but I always do. Just, uh, you know makes it easier on the wires makes it easier on everything it's not so much of a load that you're putting on the, the fatter the gauge think of it as a garden hose you know you're trying to get electricity to go through there now if you put it in like a little pencil like an 18 gauge you know it's got to push really hard to get through that wire and you're going to get a lot of amperage and it's going to heat up and you're going to have problems <clears throat> now if you put a, a three inch pvc pipe there you know it can kind of meander around in there and it's not really it's going to have plenty of room you know it's not going to get superheated and super hot and, and have to really work to get to where it needs to go. It's just going to be able to go there. So that's why I usually try to go with the biggest gauge wire that I can, you know, while you're doing it. And just the fact that I, I've had, I've got the stuff just, I've had it laying around from all the different cars that I've done audio systems in. So, you know, throughout the install, I'll be bringing you guys back in. And so that way you guys can kind of check out and see what I'm doing. But like I said, there's going to be... This is going to go in between uh, the main battery, like starting battery, and this disconnect here. And then, like I said, this disconnect will allow me to choose whether I want to run both batteries or if I just want to run one or the other. Not to mention, you know, I do plan on uh, adding a winch into this system, and I will be tying it into this, the auxiliary system. Just for the simple fact that the auxiliary system will always be running while the car's on or the truck's on so i'll always have at least two batteries on the system but what if the truck dies you know and you got to winch yourself out of a hole i'll be able to flip this sucker over and run all the electric electric eels right out of these bad boys into the winch and i'll be able to get my truck out of a hole or if i want to run just one battery to because i actually do plan on tying i want to make a, a small fuse panel and be able to tie some of the auxiliary lighting that's on the truck to uh, one of these batteries or two. But basically what I'm going to actually do is here's a distribution block that's here. And it's actually going to come, you know, your main power wire is going to come in. It's going to come off of this and it's going to branch into this. And now this, the main power wire from here is going to branch out to this right here. So what this is gonna do is that you're gonna have constant, once this is flipped on, there's constant 12 volts here. Well, there won't be anything here. It'll shut the constant 12 volt off. And then you'll have from these batteries, so this, this leg will be dead. So then you'll have another leg that's gonna come off of the same leg that's gonna come over to this. Now this is gonna connect that leg to one of these battery, one and or both of these batteries. So then when this thing is running, you just flip this on and then it just bypasses through here and goes here. So these batteries don't even have to be in the system. So it'll just completely, you know, the 12 volts will completely bypass this and go here, which is where the subs and uh, winch and things are going to be hooked up to. And then this is actually going to go off to a smaller fuse panel, like I said, that's going to power the actual head unit of the radio, um, some auxiliary lighting and maybe possibly a power inverter i don't know yet oh yeah and also a uh, an air compressor because i do actually plan on putting a compressor in this toolbox too to not only uh be able to run small pneumatic things but i'm also going to put a set of train horns uh right about uh, yonder right there get a nice loud shocker set from uh horn blasters because currently the rig does not have uh any honkables there's no honkables in the rig right now, and I need some honkables because people uh, think it's a good idea to, to cut this truck off all the time. And they'll be like in this little tiny Miata or this little sports car that, you know, stops really well. And this, I mean, not that the truck doesn't stop well, but it doesn't stop as well as a Miata. 
and uh, you know they like to pull right out in front of you and then slam on the brakes and then they're gonna wonder you know why uh, why this big massive uh, skyscraper uh, uh, this freight train of a truck just uh, turned their Miata into a pancake well with the big old horns under there I can and you know maybe they'll think twice or they'll flip me the finger uh, either way you know it's a win-win so uh, I'm gonna get to work and doing a few little things here and there I'm probably not gonna film a lot of the actual work that I'm doing just because it's pretty mundane and it's pretty you know it's it's, it's kind of boring if I haven't bored you to death already with all this talking um, so anyways we're going to get right into it so uh, <clears throat> with that out of the way had to get some, uh, some food you know I gotta keep up my figure anyways I'll show you where we're at right now I'm uh, got all the holes drilled um, everything's pretty much ready to start installing all the wires I just have to make all the connections I prefer to solder all my stuff hammer it and then solder it again just so you know that's you know that's not gonna come off of there it makes a good nice good connection better than the uh, the old crimp deals and whatnot I always try to solder my connections where I can and the way I do that propane torch a little bit of flux and of course your solder you just set this guy in here like that heat the very tip of it right here with the torch and just kind of feed solder into it and it's kind of dirty at the moment but I'll uh, I'll straighten it out and then what I do is I take it down here set it on the hitch bang 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 get it kind of crimped and flattened like that so it kind of does two things uh, one it creates a mechanical connection to where this is not going to come off of here even without the solder and then the solder just kind of fills in all the joints and make this a really nice solid uh, lug here so I got to do that in a couple of spots just to make sure I can hook all these up <clears throat> but uh, climb up on the tire here got all the holes drilled everything's uh everything's gonna go down through there and then you know of course your ground's gonna come back this way and the other wires are gonna be going that way so I've got all that situated and whatnot so the battery boxes are up there for right now oh uh, there's a dead stick bug he didn't uh he's not part of the install but uh you know But anyways, there, this is all dried up now. Looking fresh. Fresh as a bean. Oh, don't mind uh, the overspray there. We'll uh we'll you know, we'll, we'll do something uh, about that uh, at some point. Just kind of, you know, it'll be fine. It's, you know, don't worry about that, fellas. That's that's little details. Little little details. Um, but walk out here and check out this other piece got it all clear coated and everything's all painted up looking pretty there she is it's basically the color we're going to be going with it's not an exact match to the truck but uh you know it's close enough it's close enough and they're in different different parts of the truck so it's really not going to be that it's the same color as the bar that's down here and it is like it's like a shade darker almost kind of but like when the sun hits it, it just, you know, it lightens up. So you got this color here, and then that's the color of the truck. So I mean, it's you know, it's close. If you look at it, it's it's close. It's close and close enough, you know. But like I said, the mallets I got to do is just do all of the uh, the connections. Just got to do the connections for the wires. There goes my cigarettes bad habit anyways um, but uh, these are basically the little connectors that I use here this is a crimp on style but uh, what I'll do is I'll set it on the wire uh, run some solder through it and then you know, I'll crimp it down like you see here with a hammer and with a pair of uh, channel locks get it close and smack it with a hammer a couple times you know just kind of bend it around make it make it nice and tight and then solder it again and then that'll take up any of those little bits and pieces and, uh, you know, we'll be in like Flynn. So, anyways, 
I'm gonna start doing all these connections and uh, you know I'll come back at y'all once I start getting the batteries laid in start figuring out where I want all that and just take this uh, one bite at a time one bite at a time Well, it is the next day. Um, I can only work so much because I don't really have a proper shop and lighting and whatnot. So I'll go ahead and show you guys where uh, where we're at right now. And uh, I actually did get the batteries mounted up and some of the switches kind of pre-wired. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll flip this around and I'll show you what we got going on. So let's climb up on this here. That side, open it to a box. There's the bats. Don't mind a wasp trying to say hello. Again, don't mind all the beer cans. Twist the tea can stuff. Like I said, like to party. So here's our ground running in through the bottom of the toolbox here. Then you got the two batteries. These battery boxes are screwed down. Then you got the two uh, disconnects here. Still got a little bit to do there, but pop these guys off. Just kind of did this as a like a rough idea of how they were gonna sit in here. And of course, I can't get this lid off here. There we go. Right there, this one out. I did mount them a little close, so it's kind of hard to get the lids on, but you get an idea. These boxes are mounted down. The batteries aren't really gonna go anywhere. Those are the kind of terminals I'm gonna be using. So uh, this is going to be our positive feed in. I made a little jumper wire to go between the two, and I still got to make a uh, another jumper wire to come out and go to that uh, distribution block that I've got. <clears throat> that we're going to wire the um, stereo in the back of the truck to, and uh, you know that's that's about how they're going to sit there. And I still got plenty of room in here because. I've got some ideas of what to do in here. I was saying yesterday, I do want to add a small wire compressor over around in here somewhere that's going to power like small pneumatic tools. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a couple of, I'm going to run an air tank and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put that. I don't want to put it in here because I still want to have storage for tools and so forth. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing is actually putting it up behind here again. Don't mind all the garbage. Um, haven't really had a chance to clean the truck out from our last venture. Well, last couple of ventures, really. Um, so we'll run an air tank back there, and then what I'll do is I'll run one of the air trucks down to the back down to one of the parts of the bumper back here. And uh, you'll be able to have an air line to plug into there to reinflate tires or run small pneumatic tools. And, of course, the other, the other fitting from that will go down underneath the bed here to a set of train horns that I'm going to be putting in here for some honkables. But that's kind of the idea of what I want to do in here. And then I, I might actually mount like a uh, a small power inverter or something, you know, of a decent size. Probably somewhere in along one of these, probably along the back here or something. Or even probably right in here. Um, have a power inverter that will be able to run 110 and maybe some 220. I don't know. Depends on the size of the inverter I decide to get. I don't need anything too extravagantly huge because I'm not really going to be using it except for to maybe run drills or some work lights or something like that. <clears throat> Nothing really crazy. Um, that's pretty much about where I'm at, where I left off last night. I got the holes drilled. and So you got the one hole here. And like I said, that's going to be for the ground. And then you got your positive lead coming up. The good thing about this is I won't really have to use grommets because I'm going to be using the, the holes of the diameters of the... Um, this is actually conveyor belting. There's another strip in between the... Uh, you can see it right here. Kind of. There's another strip of conveyor belt right here that's in between the toolbox and the bed. And the, uh, the holes in that are just smaller than the holes I've made in the metal. So they'll act as a grommet, so I won't have to worry about wires chafing on the metal. Because, you know, there's gonna be a lot of vibrations and the wires are gonna be fidgeting around in there a lot. So I wanted to, it, it was hard getting the wires through there, but <clears throat> I think that'd be a, a better way to do it rather than trying to fit a grommet in there. Cause I'd have to fit 
like two grommets. So we have to be one inside the toolbox and then one in the bottom. And that's, it's a lot of work. But um, where I'm thinking about mounting these switches, so I'm thinking about mounting these guys like right off here off to the side. Something like that. Because I'll still be able to reach these from the ground. Uh, just kind of reach my hand up inside of here and, and flip them on or flip them off or whatever I need to do. But I can still also climb in the bed and, and see where the, the cables are. So that's going to be something I'll mount those suckers like right in here. I got to be careful. I can't mount. I wanted to mount them up here. But uh, when the toolbox comes down, this gas strut actually sits right in here. So it would hit. So they're going to have to come back here. Which is fine. But, um, you know, that way I'll still be able to reach my hand up from being on the ground and I can flip them without having to climb into the bed every time. Uh, I'll go around the back here. I'll go around the, I'll show you the underside here. Where they all come through. And that's where, see, I gotta find it. It's up, up here where the wires actually come through the bottom of the bed and come off to the side here. Here's our ground, and then the other wire runs down through here. I haven't zipped anything up yet or finalized anything. It's just kind of a rough run, so I'll come back and kind of tidy it up and get it away from the exhaust and things like that of that nature. I really kind of wish, hindsight looking back now, that I could have uh, maybe ran it on this side to keep it away from the fuel lines, but I just I don't have enough wire to do that along with I really don't want to be crossing wires over to try to run onto that side of the truck. But then that runs up up through here which comes up to our other battery here. And uh, here's where that line comes up at. I'm thinking about just tacking it into the alternator here rather than running it up here, but I've also got another one of these left over that I could sandwich right here and uh, run everything right here if need be. But uh, yeah, that's what we're working with right now. Don't mind the brake rusted uh, things and whatnot. You know, it's, it's not a show truck. Never will be. It's something that gets used. That's, you know, that's why it's got dents and scratches and dings and, you know, the truck does get used. It's not a pavement princess. But that's uh, that's where we're at. So once I start getting more of these, I gotta build some more wires and actually solder some more ends and stuff and to run up to the switch from the batteries and start finalizing all the connections. And for the most part, we should be uh, able to button this project up and you know kind of give you guys an idea of what it's gonna look like once it's done. And then. Uh, it'll be uh you know we'll have extra juice so anyways catch you guys when i uh get a little further into this well here we are we're back never mind my noisy neighbor over here but uh busy at work pretty much got all of the lines situated <coughs> go ahead and Line my bones in here. So here we go. Here's the two batteries. Um, you got positive, of course, and negative, and they all run through this switch here, which is going to be mounted right about there. So basically, what this switch does is selects between the two batteries, and then this is a main disconnect for the main power that's coming in. Um, so those are going to mount right there. And of course, you got your grounds. One ground goes down to the chassis, the other ground comes down, goes underneath, and loops over to this battery so they're grounded together. I don't think that would really be a problem. Of course, you got this positive lead going up and going under, and goes under and goes into the switch, and then the other positive lead comes out, comes around, and goes into here. So, <clears throat> and then you got this uh, line here that's coming out of the switch, that's what's going to go to that distribution block. That's going to be installed on top of one of the um, the battery box lids here, and that's what the uh, the actual amplifiers will plug into. So they'll have constant 12 volt uh, all the time, regardless. Uh, basically, 
from this switch here. So I won't have to wire them for both batteries or anything like that. It'll just, because once you isolate the main power feed that's coming into this switch, if you cut this off, that cuts the feed off here and then this leg is dead. Even though there'll still be 12 volt here, once you activate this switch, there'll still be 12 volt here and there'll be 12 volt on the other side, but it's not going to connect because it's not in the right position. At least that's what I'm hoping in theory, the way that's going to work. Um, the only way for me to test that would be to disconnect this, to shut this disconnect off, power the system up, and then go up to the front battery and take a voltage reading and see if anything's dropping. At that point, then I would know that that's not going to work and I'm going to have to figure something else out. Anyways, like I said, this is going to come off of that switch and go to the distribution block where the amplifiers will hook up and eventually the uh, winch will hook up into that as well. So that's basically all of our wiring. I got these off of the uh, jungle web space because I thought, well, you know, never hurts to have multiple connection points and possibly in the future if I decide to add anything to this, like say if I wanted to add batteries or if I wanted to add circuits just prior to, you know, proportionary to whichever battery I want, I can do that. Um, for the time being, until I get an actual circuit panel to put right about here, um, or I might put it actually on top of, see, because the distribution block is probably going to go on this battery top, so I'll probably put the fuse box on top of this one, um, just to kind of keep everything in the same area. So I worry if I put it over here and water gets behind it, uh, I'd worry that it would short that out, even though the aluminum here is not conductive. So I don't think it would ever short out against that, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. I'll just mount that over here. These switches I'm not really worried about because I'm actually gonna coat the inside of these. Once I get everything locked down and the way I want, I'm gonna go ahead and get some like rubberized truck bed coating and I'm just actually gonna spray these out inside of here so that even if water does get into here, it's not ever gonna be able to make a contact. I might do that or I don't want it to make a mess though. I could put dielectric, I'll pump dielectric down around inside of this. But um, I feel like if that would got hot, it would just drip out and make a mess behind here. Not sure, uh, let me know down in the comments which one would you guys would do, whether if you guys would uh, paint these with like a rubberized coating or to uh, just pump them full of dielectric grease. Because these are gonna get screwed right to here like this. I mean, this isn't exactly where they're gonna, they're probably gonna go more or less, so that's probably gonna go like right there. Um, and then it'll get screwed through the toolbox to it right there. Um, but actually, you know what I might do? Because I have this, more of this conveyor belt just kind of laying down there. I might cut a small piece off and just enough to kind of plant it here for the switches to kind of be a buffer in between the actual toolbox and the bolt that goes through. Um, I am going to silicone the holes on the outside, and then eventually I'm going to put uh, weather stripping on the inside of up here like it's supposed to be. I mean, I got this toolbox for free from work, so I'm not complaining. But anyways, that's the way that that's going to work out. And uh, I've still got to uh, disconnect the main... I gotta disconnect the main feed for the amplifiers that's connected to the starting battery right now and run and run that reverse back this way and run that into this system here. And then I'm pretty much done. I just gotta hook the ground up that's in the chassis. I just gotta hook the uh, the ground up underneath that goes to the chassis and then wire it into the battery up, wire this system into the battery up front. I haven't exactly decided how I'm gonna do that because of the terminals that I have there I don't think I have the room to just add another cable, but I actually have um, one of the positive terminals left over from this because it came, they came in sets of two, and I only ended up using the one. So what I actually might end up doing is I might take this one back off and uh, take this one back off and, and I might replace one of the terminals up there with one of these so I have more uh, positive inputs that I can use for that up there and then transfer the regular battery terminal that I have up there to back here just to kind of simplify things. But um, 
that's pretty much it. We're I, I'm almost done with it, and it's almost ready. To, it's like you know we're in the we're in the home stretch now. Um. So, anyways, gonna get. I just kind of wanted to drop in and give you guys a little bit of an update of how things were looking, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start finishing all this stuff up and. You know, I'll get you guys back on the horn when uh, when everything's all said and done. All right, so we are finally finished. Pretty much everything. The only thing I have left to do is just to simply tidy everything up with zip ties and connectors and so forth. Oh, uh, here. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. Got the two switches off here, mounted to the side. I got to get some hardware for those. Um, Tomorrow, after work, I'll stop by the hardware store and grab some stuff to bump these up nice and good. Tested everything. Everything works exactly the way that I was hoping it would work. Right now, the main disconnect is off, and the radio actually has power at the moment. So this jumper here, I was worried about this jumper feeding 12 volts back into this switch and therefore drawing from the front battery, which I am 100% certain that <clears throat> that is not was, is what's happening. So this leg still is hot, but uh, you know this disconnect here has them disconnected, so it doesn't matter that both legs are hot, they're just not connected. And of course you've got your main coming out, which goes to this distribution block. Everything's just kind of laying in here right now. I haven't had time to actually hard mount these right here, and this is a fuse that goes to the amps that are in the truck. So you got your main, these are your two battery leads, battery one, battery two. Right now I've got it on both which is an option you can do with a switch. You can run one, other, or both. Um, and then this other lead goes to the other battery. And then this leads off up here. This will connect these two to this line, which feeds off over to here, which goes to this distribution block, which goes from that back around underneath to this fuse, and then goes back under the truck, which comes back up underneath here which I still need to straighten all that up, but as you can see, and pass power. So that pretty much concludes that. Um, the only thing, like I said, the only thing I got left to do is just kind of hardwire, hardline everything underneath the truck, get it all nice and zip tied and secured to the frame, away from any heat sources and things of that nature. And we are in like Flynn. Um, the only other thing I still have left to do on the truck is well i've got that's still drying over there i want to give the paint time to actually hard set before i throw it back into the truck because if i try to the paint's still very soft until it actually has time to actually cure um and you start nicking it around in there and i'll start messing it messing it up really bad so don't want to do that so i will leave this kind of the way it sits for at least a couple of days and leave that right where it sits for a couple of days and let it actually set and then i can start getting this in here getting our bushings put back in of course we're not going to put these back in dry i'm going to put some grease on these which i mean you don't really have to but i'd rather put grease on them because they actually are pretty squeaky because it's metal on metal so you'll put grease down in this tube and then you'll actually separate these put grease inside of here and then grease around here so then once those all they'll be all nice and greased and They'll be able to move and do what they need to do and uh you know not squeak there's enough things that squeak on this truck so i'm trying to limit the amount of squeaks coming from said objects <clears throat> but i think that'll pretty much wrap up this video um like comment subscribe i'm gonna have a lot of other stuff coming up when i start doing stuff with this truck um i'm gonna try to start filming more and more and just kind of pushing content to you guys. I know there's not a lot up right now, but uh, I'm working on it. RYC is coming up, and I'm planning, you know, I'm planning on getting a lot of footage from there uh, with the truck, my buddies, a four-wheeler. Hopefully, if I have it back in time, um, hopefully I'll have the Renegade back. And then, uh, you know, I'll just kind of play it by ear at that point. I know it's stuck at the shop right now. Um, they did get the motor put in and they're waiting on i guess the insurance to approve them getting more better clutches or getting them new clutches because apparently they can't get the old ones off 
Mother Nature's Loctite has uh, claimed them. So that might be a project for <clears throat> when it comes back here. I might try to see if I can get those clutches off and do something with them. But, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, give me a follow. Uh, we're also on Instagram and TikTok under the name Twisted Piston. Um, I upload a lot of content just to, to TikTok at the moment as I'm still working on getting videos and content for YouTube. I have a bunch of shorts up there, but uh, you know, stay tuned because there's there's going to be some there's going to be some plans for this old truck here. Definitely some big plans. So stay tuned. <laughs>